Now we're ready to start actually drawing something, so let me reset my stage size back up to 100%, and we'll choose our first drawing tool, the Pencil Tool. Some basics about drawing inside of Flash. First of all, it's a vector-based tool, and that means all the tools up in the tool palette are going to create or edit vector objects. A vector object is simply something where the outline controls the shape, not the pixels that are shown in the graphic. Fonts are actually a good example of a vector object. They have outlines that control the shape, and we can scale them and resize them, and they look crisp at every size. And that's just the way vectors are going to work as well. Using our pencil tool is actually really easy. Just select a tool, and make sure you take note of what color is sitting next to the pencil icon. This is the color of the line you're going to be drawing. The pencil tool also has a couple of extra settings down here in the options area of the tool palette. This will change depending on what kind of tool you have selected. With the pencil tool, we have a selection between straight, smooth, and ink lines. For starters, I'm going to leave the setting at smooth, and also make sure that this other setting next to it, the object drawing mode, is set to off. Off usually looks like it's a gray value. If you click it to on, it's going to be dark. So we're going to make sure that setting is off as we get started. Then, just go over to your drawing area and start drawing. It's a very easy, intuitive tool to use. You can just click and drag around, and you'll be creating a nice line. Since I had the smooth setting turned on, it smoothed out my line just a little bit, even though there's some wiggles right in here. If we just switch it over to a straighten setting and drag along the same type of area, you can see that we get mostly straight lines as a result of our drag. We've got another tool up here that we can use to make a basic line, and that's the pen tool. Now this is a much more traditional vector drawing tool, and some of you may already be familiar with it from tools like Illustrator or Fireworks. I'll just change the color so that we can see the difference between the two lines, and to draw with the pen tool, we just drag it on out, and for starters, we just want to click with the tool. Each click will drop a control point onto our stage, and if I just click, I'll connect the dots between the points and create a line. To create smooth lines instead of pointy corner lines, next time, click and hold your mouse button down, and while it's being held down, you can drag out from that point that you just created. You can see that this creates a curved line. I'm dragging on a sort of handle here, and that handle lets me control the direction of the curve and the amount of curvature. The more I pull it out, the pointier the curve gets. Now, this tool takes a little bit of practice to get used to. But if you can just visualize where you want your points to go, you can just click and drag out your handle to shape the curves. Now there is another tool in the palette that goes along with the pen tool, kind of its partner so to speak. It's up here next to the normal selection tool and that is the sub selection tool. Let's click on that and let's see what it does. Now what I'm going to do first is click in an empty area to deselect the curve that we just drew and I'm going to go back and select the curve. What this tool does is it reveals all the points that you use to create that curve. And if you click on a point, it reveals the handle. That allows you to just grab a hold of it and drag it out to reshape the curve another time. What's interesting is that we can use this tool to select the curves that we drew with the pencil tool. What you'll notice is they also have points and handles. The only difference between the two curves is that we didn't actually select the point and handle location for the pencil drawing curves. That was done automatically by the pencil tool. So you can see it's a little bit more intuitive to work with. Our pen tool just has the special ability to let us choose those point locations so we can more precisely control our curves. As you probably already know, any tool up in the tool palette that has a dark triangle in the lower right corner has more tools underneath it. So if you click and hold down on the pen tool, you should see the pen tool and the add and delete anchor point tool. Those are pretty basic. You can click on a curve with the add point tool and add a point someplace in the middle of the curve. And basically that just gives you more control over the curve at that spot. By adding a point, you get a handle with it and you can change the curve to precisely match whatever you want it to be at that point. The Remove Point tool does exactly what the name implies. If you click on a point, it simply removes it from the curve and reshapes the line as if the point was never there. The Convert Direction Point tool is also pretty easy to use. Just select it, and if you click on a point that already has a handle creating a smooth curve, it will remove those handles and you'll end up with a corner point. Then if you click on a point that's currently a corner point and drag, you'll actually create a new set of handles that you can adjust and pull around. 
Finally, if you select the end of a handle, it will break that handle in two and create two separately controlled handles. Now make sure when you want to just change the handles and not create another one, go back to the subselection tool to grab those handles and move them around. Like I said, this tool is not so intuitive, but with a little practice you can figure out where points go and how far you should drag the handles.